Okay, folks, gotta go pay the bill at the parts store. Hey, folks, this is Mike from KEI Fabrication. This is my LS swapped Mazda B2200. Design chair, I can do some highly classified scientific calculations. All right, so I want to do more first starts up on this uh, channel. So I'm setting myself up, taking some lessons from Derek at Vice Grip Garage and a few others. Got my clackety clack pump there. I got a boat tank that um, is just full of uh, the remainder of some really bad gas. I got to flush that out but I've converted from the outboard fitting to a barbed fitting and I'm going to get an appropriate amount of line to hook to that and to the pump and I'm going to add on to my little connections here with something like, like these uh, and I'm going to put plenty of length on them so they are away from the battery uh, I have run into an issue where I was using one of these pumps to drain a fuel tank and I had a battery sitting there and just the spark from connecting those to the battery terminal created a spark. I had spilled some gas, started the thing on fire and uh, fortunately it didn't get away from me but uh, it was a wake up call. So I'm going to put super long cables on that, connect them so they're insulated down there and we have the battery on charge over there so we got a little trickle charger on there so that'll be good when we're ready to go so uh, hopefully in the next couple of days we'll have a startup video for a couple of vehicles going All right, folks, today you are doing one of the most American things on Black Friday in the United States, and that is we're doing the first startup of a vehicle that's been sitting for quite a while. So I've got some of the essentials. You saw me put together the fuel tank, which I tested this morning. Found out that the pickup tube broke off the bottom of this, which is maybe why it was still laying around and was free. Stole the battery out of the camper got the jump box, essential fluids, got an oil change kit, and extra fuel, drain pan, jack stands, floor jack, got an air tank way up there in the front. I have no idea if that's enough. Got some basic hand tools. Of course if I was doing this uh, correctly I would have a list and be able to check it all off, but I'm doing this from memory and you know that never works so if nothing else at the end of the day we'll figure out exactly what we forgot to bring um, this check this little pump has a valve on it uh, make sure you turn it off before you put it in the vehicle because when you pressurize the inside of the tank guess what it pumps all out plus it's probably not a bad idea to put a plug in the end of the tube so I've got the vehicle open to air all the fumes out my wife is riding shotgun today. She's going to be real pleased with raw fuel being the uh, scent of the day. So, all right. We'll see how we make out. I'll show you the vehicle once I arrive at the destination. All right, folks. This is the car we're going to try and perform a startup on. We don't know anything about this car. We've never opened the hood, never opened the door. And actually, it was abandoned and left here. The property was sold and bought, and we couldn't even see the car here. It was totally loaded with briars and brush. And Steve here has come in with his brush hog and cut away uh, just to get this far to it. I mean, my truck is only 
a few feet away from it now, but the work just to get this far into where this car was abandoned uh, was incredible. So, uh, so Steve, let's um, swipe the window off and see what that inspection sticker says. Okay. And then we'll talk a little bit about the history of this. So. So what are we thinking? This is December 2002 was the last. All right. So this has most likely been sitting for, uh, you know, the better part of 18 years, right? Yeah. I mean, yep. why would it? Say. So it was probably taken off the road. The um, guy that owned this place, I believe it was his mother's. I've got a title where he sold it to her in 1990. And she drove this car. Right, and this is a what now? This is a... 1980 uh, Ford Fiesta. Okay. So is it a Fiesta or a Festiva? What was the... Because they still make... Okay, it is a Fiesta. Yep. Oh, a Fiesta, okay. Yep. All right. Originally came from Simon Ford, which is probably 20 or 30 miles from, from this area, so... So what do you think? You want to try opening the door and see? And we eventually need to open the hood to see if there's even an engine to That's start, right? right? There might not even be a motor in it. <laughs> it's, uh, we need to break any branches away? Yeah, looks like uh, <laughs> looks like this one has grown right into the door. Oh my gosh, look at that. Yeah. It actually <laughs> grew in and spread the... It actually went in and started bulging out in the door. <laughs> It actually dented the door. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I can get this out of here, maybe it won't act as a wedge. Yeah, right? Drop we won't be there. pushing the fender off the there front of the go. car. Tell you what. Yeah. Might as well get rid of some of this stuff here, too. <laughs> yeah, it's not a hot rod. It's not a muscle car, but it has a story, and... Uh, it's certainly going to be a challenge. We'll see what happens with it. There we have it. <laughs> First time. It's got keys in it, Mike. <laughs> wow, that's unusual. We'll take that. Well, it's got a key, but we don't even know if it has a motor in it. Obviously, the mice have been busy. Looks like they've been making their, uh, their home in the headliner and such. Oof. We were really thinking this car was, was in pretty good shape, but the A post is rotted all up along the... Oh, wow. So that, that's probably all right from mice urine, actually. Is that a nitrous switch on the steering column? Ooh, maybe it is. We'll have to check for the <laughs> bottle somewhere. How do you open the hood on this thing? Has it got an inside hood latch? Or... I don't know. We'll check and see if we can get the hood open. It's got the, the four-speed emblem in the middle of the dash. So he's chopping away all of the bittersweet and everything just to get to the driver's door. See if there's a hood latch that we can trigger and maybe get the hood open. He made his way to the driver's door. I think I saw a little lever on the... Is it? it opens from the... From the really, yeah. Whoa. Hey, there's a motor in it. Hey, look at that, and a battery. Yep, <laughs> battery must be dead, Mike. It's not turning over. Man, you got ripped off on this one. <laughs> Can't believe the battery doesn't have a charge on it. <laughs> Holy cow! This could be, uh. Ooh. This could be a little more of a challenge than uh, even getting the air cleaner off. <laughs> oh, wow. The, uh... I think well... I, I think I had uh, seen where they have a 1.6 in them. They actually well, used to... if there to, was anything left to this, maybe we could read it. Uh, they actually used to do some crazy crazy things with these things in Europe. It is a 1.6. I 
think that says 0.6. Yeah. Yep. Interesting. I was under the impression that it would be like a 1.3. But, uh, still got the VIN tag here. Anyway. Alright, I'm going to put the camera on the tripod and then we'll see if we can get into this thing and there is a dipstick on it. We'll pull the dipstick on that. Wow. Yeah, I'm not going to taste it, but mm. it's not full of water. That's good. <laughs> so eventually Ooh, we'll... the radiator's got water. Oh, it's even it's got antifreeze, antifreeze in it, yeah. so that means okay. potentially the block's not cracked. Wow. Yeah. All right. So uh, let's see. Eventually, we're going to get to the point where we'll see how many uh, rodents are living in the air cleaner. Maybe take the spark plugs out before we even try and bar it over or anything, and uh, throw some penetrating oil in there or something. Or depends. What do you want to do? Just go That's for it. <laughs> we could hook a battery up and try and whip it over, but. Uh, Chances are we probably want to look in the air cleaner and yeah. there's already, yeah. you can see, <laughs> somebody's got to They've been, I don't know if this little uh, valve is still intact that blocked them from getting all the way in or not, but we'll show you that when we get it opened up. Let's see what this looks like. Wow, it's it's actually pretty clean. The mice got stopped at the the heater control flap there. It appears. I probably should have brought one of those little magnetic uh, devices that uh, hold on to the nuts and bolts as you take them off. Let's see if we can get the air cleaner all the way off. See if this throttle linkage is working at all. Yeah. Hoses everywhere here. Wow. Some of the some of the vines that were growing made it all the way up into the carburetor all the way up under the carburetor just make the air cleaner out of the way here got a big giant hose going I think this even had a smog pump on it <laughs> that's what this is you can imagine Good emissions, good on emissions. Okay. Is that one more T fitting here. Of course we're gonna remember where all these go after, right? Right. <laughs> Well, it's got a, a rubber connection on the fuel line there, so if we need to, we can tap into that to apply the uh, fuel system that we brought. Well, I'm assuming... Holy cow. Man. 
carburetor's not even froze up. Let's break some stuff around. You want to try the gas pedal, Steve? See sure. if it works from in there. Wow. It's working. Even the choke is closing. Wow. I got some fog and oil. We'll spray it down in there in case, uh, in case the engine does turn. At least it'll pull in some lubrication at the top end. Make it smoke good if it does start and run. <laughs> I'm looking at spark plugs here and I the way they're recessed into the head, I'm not even sure we can find them. Take a look at the way the spark plugs are. You can, the porcelain stops and then it's just loaded with uh, debris and rodent droppings and everything. You can't even see the spark plugs, so I don't know if it's worth even digging around them and trying to get them out uh, or just trying to see if the motor turns over and put gas and spark to it see if it runs it sure has a lot a lot of oil on the outside of the motor yeah you think we should be uh, responsible and try and pull the plugs and put oil in it or should we just see if we I don't know what do you go think? right to a battery and <laughs> go right to it and fire it up and <laughs> see if it turns over that way what do you think I'm game we're just gonna I'm go for it go for it all sure right. why not all right so I'm gonna uh, pull the battery terminals off I got a battery in the truck and uh, we'll see if anything happens when we turn the light on or whatever. So, so we got the battery out and uh, typical farmer repair, you know, the old block of wood to keep it from running into the headlight, but the frame rail, the crumple zone, <clears throat> and the inner fender well is kind of missing. So we'll drop a, uh, a largely oversized battery in here and see if we can get any life out of the key or starter or anything all right we managed to wedge the battery in the corner here got the connections hooked up probably need to be cleaned a little better but you want to try and see if anything is happening on the dashboard or by the key Any lights or anything? Yeah, we got a battery light. Ooh, there's something going on down the dash there. I think that's the only light that comes on. I'm gonna kick it. Yeah, let's give it a. There's no kick. Ooh, that's what that switch is for. The fan works. So it looks like we have to get dig into a starter. Uh, Solenoid somewhere, maybe? Yeah, something. It's not even... The brake light came on. That's a good sign. Yep. More lights. Yeah, she's not... Alright, we'll have to see if we can do something about the starter solenoid. I don't even know where to, to look for a starter on this thing. We'll have to figure that out. Uh, let's see, is there anything up here on the firewall? It's got a... DuraSpark ignition. <laughs> Oil. Alright, so we'll have to see if we can cross out the starter with a screwdriver or something. Really? So I can see a starter. Which which one do we jump? That window ain't rolling up in 
No. <laughs> See, I just don't know which side of the solenoid is the to activate it for the key, so I have to test each side here. Looking there. Is the radiator fan that came on? Yeah. Wow. So I must have not had a um the thermostat on the fan probably didn't work. <laughs> I got That's the a good key sign. off still, yeah, so wow. Yeah. You want to just try some uh, pop juice and see if it has any spark? Or do you want to, I have a spark checker. That's pretty funny that it turns over so well. Yeah. So I'll put a spark checker on it so when we turn it over, see if it has any kind of... No, I throw the key in the on position. Yeah. I don't know if you can see that. Okay. Something's making some noise. Do you want to try the key? Well, no, I disconnected the things on the starter, so. Okay. Let me see if, uh, it does have some sort of electronic ignition with that box back there, but we'll see what happens. Hey, I'm getting, uh, I'm getting a little flash. All right. So, uh, that would be sweet. Let's see. One, two, three. Put a little uh, starting fluid in the carburetor, and then if it does anything, then we can hook up the external fuel tank. Logging oil. Alright, this is the part where it backfires and burns my eyebrows off. All right. Let's see. There's that. There's that. Oh my goodness. You're kidding me. Oh my goodness. <laughs> We go for the external fuel tank. What do you think? Yeah, that's that's unbelievable. I can't believe that. All right. <laughs> <Woo -hoo. laughs> wow. Well, I think they didn't get much of a view there because I had it zoomed in. But all right, so we're gonna disconnect the gas tank line from the fuel filter that's on the carburetor. To hook up our remote fuel tank and uh, see how long we can get this to run for. So, we're trying to one-up Derek from Vice Grip Garage and use our boat tank with the clackety-clack pump. And like we said, we're in the process of tackling in. I know, Derek, the intro to your video says, I'm an idiot, don't do what I do. We're just idiots as well, so we're, gonna, <laughs> we're just going to follow what you do. So a couple things will happen here if it starts up and runs. If there's any fuel in the tank, it'll come squirting out of the out of the hose. But when we turned it over with with no spark or anything, it didn't sound like it was down on compression on any of the cylinders. It didn't have that lazy yeah, I think. You know, one. I can't believe it, I think fired. All right. Got a vacuum hose there that just broke. So, we'll point that one right towards the exhaust pipe, right? 
<laughs> so if you go underneath, right under there, slide that baby right on there. Gotta loosen them up. I just put them on so they wouldn't fall. All right. it up and uh, turn the valve on and uh, let's see if it's pouring out inside the carburetor. Huh? Either the float's stuck or it's working, one or the other. Accelerator pump works. That is amazing. All right, we're gonna go on the turn. Is the key on? Key's on. All right, let's, uh, let's see if we can get this baby to fire up on its own here. That's just plugging up two vacuum lines. Give it a little help. I'm gonna put the uh, radiator fan on. That sounded like a rod knock. should jack it up and see if we can get the wheels to spin. Yeah. All right, that's where we're headed next. We're gonna jack it up, put the, uh, right now, the driver's side tire is directly in the dirt. The passenger side is sitting on blocks of wood. So we'll jack it up, put it on jack stands, and we'll see if any of this stuff moves when we turn the key. I guess it's in neutral, huh? Did we ever check that? I did, yeah. Oh, good. Okay. Good on you, because I forgot all about it. All right, let's see if we can make this thing spin. So before we jack this side up, we just wanted to show that it is in the dirt up past probably two or three inches. It's actually past the pattern of uh, wheel openings there in the, in the rim. So it's in the dirt like four inches. The rim itself is in the dirt, and then the tire is deeper than that. So, <laughs> see what happens when we put a jack on it. I would have never thought that hood opened up that way, would you? No. Nope, I went to the wrong end first. It's a race car. The old sidewall of the tire looks a little, a little defeated. Yeah. Some more big blocks, right? Yeah. All right, we've jacked it up and put some six by six blocks under the frame on both sides. And the goal is now I'm going to leave you looking like that. We're going to fire it up and 
see if the clutch is frozen to the flywheel or if anything spins or moves. So here goes nothing. This is the this is the starter. Hopefully we didn't make a big mistake by shutting it off. That's too good. That's unbelievable. Wanna jump in and see if it doesn't spin? Third or first? First will probably try and break all the brake drums loose. Well, the clutch works. Oh, that's reverse. We might be able to drive this thing out of here. Now it's really whipping. What happens when you step on the, on the put it in first gear? What happens when you step on the brake pedal? Oh, the brake is hard. The master cylinder is rusted solid. That brake's not even pushed. Ah, brakes are optional, right? That's right. All right. <laughs> so you want to let it run in the, um, in like first gear for a little while? Is that right? Six miles an hour. I just plugged a couple of vacuum hoses. Let's see if it... Uh, if it idles any better now. Guess the neutral safety switch doesn't work, yeah. huh? I didn't realize when we stopped the Fiesta filming to get it started uh, that I kind of ended in a place that um, I didn't leave a good segue into the next segment. So you see what happened was we were uh, running around trying to find tires to put on it. And what ended up happening is the, the day just ran out. We had no success finding tires. So we just came home, packed up all our tools and equipment before it got dark and um, took care of the things that we needed to to finish out the day. So, I'm going to leave you folks off here, and stay tuned for the next episode because it is spectacular, and we'll see you all in a couple of days. Thanks so much for watching. <laughs>